So someone sent me this clip and I don't remember who it is exactly because I can hear his voice and I kind of recognize it. I think the guy's called Clinton or something like that. Clinton? Comment down below if you know who the, who the guy is, if you recognize that guy's voice, okay? Because I want to give him credit for having this clip. Someone sent me the clip on Outlook, okay? And uh, I couldn't find the original because CPAC edited that out of the beginning of the video. Just to say, man, that's how humiliating this video is. But anyways, now... Justin Trudeau comes in the room, he says hi to Anand, says hi to a couple of liberals, and you see uh, Jolie getting up. But the people start giving him an ovation, like they were happy to see Justin Trudeau. So I'm like, who the hell is, who the hell is giving an ovation to Justin Trudeau? And then you'll notice that Christy Freeland is like at the bottom right in red. You'll, know, you'll see Freeland looking to the right. That's when the most hilarious moment in history happens. She looks over. You see that? See how she looks over here? She's like, oh, they love it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, weird. Then the camera turns over. They're a Paul. They were cheering Pierre Pouliev. Oh, yeah. I'm like, weird. Then the camera turns over. They're a Paul. Humiliated the entire Liberal Party without even trying, not doing anything other than entering the room. This is not intentional. They both came in at the same time. From now on, if Pierre Polyev enters a room with Justin Trudeau anywhere, he humiliates him. Pierre has the power to humiliate the liberals simply by entering the room. I really like what Pierre Polyev was doing in here because he was confronting the journalists. It's a really, really good clip. And at the same time, at one point, I feel like he's confirming Melissa Lansman as the deputy prime minister, so the, the vice premier ministre. So she'll be replacing Freeland because he turns, someone asked him a question and he turns around and asks her for her opinion. And logically, you should always choose a woman now, these days, like all the parties seem to do this trend. So they'll choose the most intelligent woman they have in their party. So, you said, yesterday you said that you endorse Israel proactively defending itself by hitting Iran's nuclear sites, which is something that President Joe Biden does not endorse. Do you not feel like this could lead to a likelihood of an all-out conventional war between Iran and Israel? And are you, do you not agree with Joe Biden and his assessment? I think the idea of allowing uh, a genocidal, theocratic, unstable dictatorship that is desperate to, be, to avoid being overthrown by its own people to develop nuclear weapons is about the most dangerous and irresponsible thing that the world could ever allow. And if Israel were to stop that genocidal, theocratic, unstable government from acquiring nuclear weapons, it would be a gift by the Jewish state to humanity. Why wouldn't you attack the nuclear sites of a country that's right next to you if they're trying to build nuclear weapons? One of these weapons can destroy, can destroy Israel completely. So of course, that if normal thinking, you know, logically, I don't think Israel gives a crap what Biden thinks, but like he should actually let them do what they need to do. Like it's not going to escalate the war. Like what would escalate the war is let Iran develop like nuclear sites. I'm not talking about power plants. I'm talking nuclear sites where they're enriching uranium. Mr. Freeland said that she'd be willing to work with the conservatives to pass any legislation referencing back during COVID where the two parties <clears throat> work together. Are there any priorities which you actually share with the liberals where you could see the two parties working together to pass something? What do you think? You seen anything good they're doing lately? By the way, I was very rude. I have an incredible team here. I want to point them out. Just confirmed there that she's going to be like the, the um, deputy prime minister. The amount of projects that she will take charge of for the conservatives by herself, you know, just working like that. It's amazing, man. Like to have people like that, that can do anything for the party. And, you know, it's not even hard for her. Like she just and she enjoys it. But we have our, our great uh, heroine and deputy leader, uh, Melissa Lansman who, in addition to doing a terrific job in all of her roles, she helped this guy put his kippa on properly so it didn't fall off yesterday. So thank you for that. And she is, a, uh, she is leading the charge on literally every single file. And then we have... I know all
of you have been giving me credit for pointing out inflation would follow money printing. It was actually Marty Morantz. So please uh, give Marty a round of applause, everybody. You're asking me on, uh, look, what is their policy? It's to, they've doubled the debt, they've doubled housing costs, they've given us the worst inflation in 40 years. They would have to reverse, they have to do exactly the opposite of everything they've done to fix all the problems that they've caused. Are you what I'm, I'm saying is, what I'm, what I'm saying is, let's ax the carbon tax to bring down gas, heat, and groceries rather than quadrupling the tax to 61 cents a litre. I would work with her on axing the carbon tax. I and at one point, you know, they asked um, Pierre, and when they asked Pierre, like, would you be willing to work with Chrystia Freeland and do like some partisan stuff like with the liberals? He turns around and looks at Melissa Lansman and um, asks Melissa what, what she thinks. And then Pierre ends up saying, I will work with her to ax the tax. <laughs> I allow her to take my private member's bill that will build the homes by removing bureaucracy to get building. I would allow her, I would allow the government to take my entire uh, plan to cap government spending with a dollar for dollar law to, to bring down the deficit, inflation and interest rates. And I would allow them to take my plan to stop the crime with jail, not bail, stronger borders and not banning hunting rifles and treatment rather than unsafe supply so we can bring our loved ones home drug free. So take those, take those. Take that. So why not just agree to No, but I'm just finishing the question. If you take those ideas, ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime, to Christia Freeland, let me know what she says. You can't do any of that until this current debate is dispensed with. So why not just agree to send it to the committee like the Speaker has suggested? The RCMP says it already has some of these documents. Why continue to buy the government more time with keeping the House of Commons in stasis? The you can't bring up your uh, is, it's been, confidence motions. It's been months now since the, the, the Auditor General revealed a $400 million spending scandal involving 186 incidences of conflict of interest where Liberal appointees gave tax dollars to their own companies. $400 million is a lot of money for the single moms who can't afford groceries, the seniors who can't afford rent. We're not just going to let $400 million of corruption be swept under the rug uh, so Justin Trudeau can get on with his day. So we say, we, let's end this now, let's get Parliament back to work by handing over the documents to the police so we can bring home the Pierre has a really good team around him and that's what makes him good. If you're surrounded by idiots, it gives you uh, Jagmi Singh, Justin Trudeau, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth May. That's what, that's what you get. Like, I think this guy actually, like, when he's having a bad day, he always pretends he's having a good day. Like, he's that damn dumb. And, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Anyways, man, the first clip happened the day before that one. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.